Hello, 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 and welcome to Ask Mike. And which Mike do you think we are referring to? That is none other than renowned businessman Michael Lee Chin. You may know him as none other than a Jamaican and a Canadian billionaire that's with a B, and that is in US dollars. Earlier this year, he promised to do four mentorship, mentorship sessions with our people, with the money makers. So this is the second one. True to form, he is fulfilling his promise to us, to our little growing um, and budding community. We've selected five people, five lucky people, to ask Mr. Lee Chin a question about personal finance or business. And let me tell you, I've had an opportunity to go through some of the questions that you guys submitted, and they are very thought provoking, Mr. Lee Chin. I hope you're ready. I hope you, I hope you brought your thinking cap. I know you do bring your decades of experience because these are some good ones. As a matter of fact, I am waiting myself to hear the answers. And I hope you, the viewers, have your pen and paper ready because some gems are about to be dropped, especially if we are to go by the last edition of Ask Mike, um, you know, to set the precedent, right? A lot of gems are going to be shared this evening. Now, just before I introduce our guest of honor, let me ask you a question. Are you a member of the Money Mission community? That is the space where we discuss things like this, things business related, things personal finance related. We ask them as part of our online community. So I encourage you to check that out at moneymission.mn.co. Here are the four things you need to know to make money on social media. One, how to get people's attention and create compelling content that makes them stop scrolling and listen to you. Two, how to build an audience that will constantly share your content so that it goes viral. Three, how to get your audience to take a specific action such as visiting your website, signing up for your emails, or buying a product. And four, how to run your social media like a business. These are the four elements of my new masterclass, Money Marketing. It starts November 6th, live inside the Money Mission community. Sign up by October 31 and get 40% off. I guarantee you'll get thousands of dollars in value if you implement these strategies. Go to the link in my bio and tap Money Marketing for 40% off. Sale ends October 31. Let's get this money. Right, right, right. Let's get this money. So the link is in the bio. The link is in the, no, not the bio, in the description. And you can also just type it in your browser, moneymission.mn.co. I'll be live there next week, Monday. Money Marketing, which is the newest course, a live four-part course, will be starting. So everybody who's been asking me for years now, how do you make money on social media? I'm going to go through it piece by piece by piece. Well, at this time, at first, let me plug out this thing because something seems to be giving trouble in the back end. So I'm going to plug this out. This is live TV, guys. The show must go on. Yep. So <laughs> like I was saying, at this time, let me introduce our guest of honor, none, honor, none other than Michael Lee Chin. Hi, good evening. Good evening. How are you? I am well, despite the earthquake. You heard that we had a big earthquake today, 5.6. Oh, yeah. 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 Fortunately, I haven't heard of any fatalities or major injuries. And, you know, he seemed to be doing well, coping well with, with the aftermath of that. Thank goodness. All right. So, Mr. Lee Chin, we have five people ready to ask you some very thought-provoking questions this evening. And I'm going to get right to it. Our first young entrepreneur is Nicholas Samuels. Nicholas is a tech entrepreneur. He started a business called Zaya Consultancy earlier this year, and they focus on digital transformation. Nicholas, good evening. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening, Khalil. How are you? I am Thank well. You the, Thank you so, for the opportunity to be here. You're welcome. So take it away and ask your questions, Mr. Lee Chin. All right. Good evening, Mr. Lee Chin. It's an honor to have this opportunity to speak with you. Andrew. Good evening, Nic Nicholas. <laughs> All right. um, just to get into it very quickly, one of the things that is important for me at Zaya is the culture of the business. 
right? <clears throat> so question I have is how do you ensure that the culture that you want for your business endures, even though you might not have the right talent, the right the capital to recruit the right talent to get started? And how do you suggest that I could get there? Well, uh, the culture of the business should reflect your own values, right? Uh, so that the, 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 it's easy for you to lead by example because it, it, it's a reflection of your values. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, uh, the businesses that I'm associated with, they are my, my, my own personal mantra is prosper, pros, prosperitas cum caritate, meaning doing well by doing good. In other words, you can't, you, 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 and in order, and the, the, the literal translation is prosperity with care, right? You don't want to be an ocean, a sea, uh, an island of prosperity in a sea of uh, poverty. You want to uplift people. That's, that's, that's how I am personally. And therefore, I want my business businesses to reflect that uh, those values. So what that means is I think long-term, right? Because I, I think long-term and I do everything to make sure that there's a balance between uh, short-term profits and long-term doing well for society. So, okay, so that's personally, uh, that those, the business, as I said, the businesses must reflect how you, uh, what would make you a fulfilled person, especially if you're an own operator, you have that privilege. Yeah. The other <laughs> thing is, uh, you know, every business should focus on three, three things. Making sure that every day your behavior is such that it accretes to an improved reputation. Mm -hmm. Secondly, making sure you differentiate yourself in the marketplace. And thirdly, making sure, Nicholas, that you really and truly focus on addressing customers' needs. Uh, so if you focus on those three things, there's no question as to what will happen to your business. You'll always, there'll always be relevance of your business to the customers. And if you have a big reputation, if your business has a great reputation, it means that you won't be a commodity and you have better margins. Thank you. That was that was very insightful. <clears throat> and that is one of the things that I strive to achieve by partnering with our clients because I believe it should be a partnership. We should both benefit and try to gain as much as possible from it. Thank you. <clears throat> right. But in 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 continuation of that, <clears throat> right? Um again, it's a tech business. So at the core of that is the ability to have the right core services in place, as in support. Um, customer support, engagement, etc. Right. So <clears throat> the other question is, what is the how how soon should I try to go and market to get new customers, new clients, and <clears throat> balance the amount of support that I have in house, right? Because the fear is, if it is that I'm going out and I'm winning the business and I'm not able to support properly, that could reflect negatively on the reputation of the company right so what is the balance there so you should always be talking to your customers because your customers pain point uh will be will provide guidance to what you should be doing uh with your technology to make sure that their pain points are minimized so you should always be talking to customers okay. uh because again it will it will guide you articulately as to how you should finish your product the, the 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 what you want what you don't want to do is sit in your ivory tower 
and think <laughs> this is what clients want, customers want, mm -hmm. and you try to contort them to your product. That's not long. That's not a long-term sustainable proposition. Right. I'm, I'm totally there with you. It, it is, again, as I said earlier, to squeeze as much out of the product for them to benefit from because a lot of the times what we find is that persons will do the investment and they will then do a major capital investment. But when they get the tools, it doesn't actually serve their needs. And that is the one thing that we don't want to happen with our clients, right? So, so, so totally know, know your customers, mm -hmm. right? That's a right. very... The KYC, know your customers, very important uh, North Star for any end of your business, whether you're in tech business or you're industrial, know your customers because then, then you can always be articulate in terms of what their needs are and that relevance will distinguish you from your competitors. Uh, mm -hmm. Simpler, simpler said, most people don't simply say most people don't do it. Yeah. You have an idea, right? But your perception may be different from the reality. You have to make sure you, 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 you base your, uh, your, your design on the reality of what your customers' needs are. Yes. That is elemental for any business. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that one. Right, so move right in, right into networking and mingle events, right? Because that is very that's a key component to actually getting your name out, getting the brand out, and meeting persons as well, right? Um, do you have any pointers for how it is that we can have a leave a lasting impression with the persons we engage with at these events? <laughs> uh, it's that that's you, you know talking about advocacy, right? Yes. That's what you're talking about, advocacy. Yes. So advocacy really, a lasting impression. You know, I, I learned to listen early in my career. And I was selling mutual funds. And I'm a very observant person. So this, this gentleman would come in every month, every week, and he would have the best sales. So I thought, what distinguishes this person? And, you know, it, his product knowledge as a salesman was not the best. But what he had was passion. So when he spoke to you, you not only, you not only hear it, you smell it, you feel it, you taste it, <laughs> you feel it, you see it. In other words, he five sensed whatever he, right. he whenever he spoke. And that's a lesson that I, I, I remain indelible with me forever, right? So you, when, you're, when, you, when, you want, when you're networking, you want to make sure that you're, you're the people to whom you're speaking, you're five sensing what it is you're advocating. So you're memorable. Okay, excellent. <clears throat> All right, and last question for me is <clears throat> there, there Marketing is, is critical in a lot of the times to getting your name out and pushing your brand, etc. Right? <clears throat> but what are the most effective forms of marketing or the, the way that you engage that you follow? My, my attitude towards marketing is the following Mar the marketing is inversely proportional to your reputation. In other words, if your reputation is big, you don't need mm -hmm. much marketing right right so therefore a key then is to make sure that the reputation of your business is continuously improving so your marketing spend can go down right okay. so that's my attitude towards marketing marketing uh is something that you you want to minimize and you can only minimize it over time by right. building the best reputation so it comes back again to make sure that whatever products you have, it really addresses clients' needs articulately, is differentiated, right? And right. over time, and if it's back with advocacy, back back with advocacy, 
then uh, th 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 then uh, you will over time, and it's it's a long term business. Business is long term, so right. over time you will develop the requisite reputation. And as I said, once you have a big reputation, uh, marketing you, you will be able to minimize the amount of marketing. And the the the, the analogy I I always think about is if Warren Buffett, who is the best money manager in the world, won't start a fund. How much money would he have to spend on marketing? Zero, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. That gives you a, a north star as to how you should be thinking. Okay, you know it's easy, easy to throw money at market marketing, and it's very difficult to measure the return. Right, right, very difficult to measure. So again, focus on your customer. Uh, be this, be this differentiated in the. In, in, in terms of your product mix and how you're really addressing your customers' needs. And over the long run, you advocate st strongly and you'll do very well. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Leachie. And thank you again, Kalila, for the opportunity. Mr. Leachin, for those insights. Nick, I hope you are taking notes. Mr. Lee Chin, before we continue, let me ask you a little production matter now. I want you to move slightly to your, I think that's your left. I'm not sure. Move slightly to your left so you can be more. This way? In the this no, way? the other way. The other way. The the other other way. way. Okay. Yeah, so you can be more uh. in the center of the camera. There okay. we go. Hey, Perfect. Good? good. Perfect. Yes, that is All right. good. That is good. So let me introduce our next guest. His name is Dane McGibbon. He's a management and strategy consultant with Acumen Pro Limited. They've worked with hundreds of organizations across the public and private sectors, and they're positioning themselves as leaders in artificial intelligence business solutions. Hot new area. He has an MBA from the University of Finley and a bachelor's in mechanical engineering from UE St. Augustine. So here's Dane. Dane, welcome. Dean. And take it away. Can't hear you, Dean. Dean is muted. So just unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. there you go. Right, thank you. Thank, thank you for having me. So, um, so as Kalila said, I am a management um, consultant and business analyst. Um, I work with organizations in the public and private sector. Um, and I've always been impressed with how you you were able to turn around and diversify NCB in the early 2000s when they were having difficulties. Um, and shortly afterwards, they you know, became one of the most impressive companies in Jamaica and the Caribbean. Um, as a consultant, one of the hardest things to do is figuring out how to save a sinking ship, right? How to, how um, to what, Dean? I'm sorry. How, how to, to save what? a sinking ship. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. So could you tell me about your approach when dealing with a situation like this? I know a sinking ship. <laughs> if you I'm did, not if you did. That day. <laughs> NCB uh, is a strong behemoth. It's a right. little bit right. inefficient. It's right. a little bit. Uh, no, I think he means. I think he means years ago when you took it over. Right. It oh, well, years ago when I took it over. Okay. Right. Yeah, so right. how do you save a sinking ship? Yeah, first thing then was uh, you need the the, the 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 problem is most companies is mm. lack of alignment between the business units and right. between the, uh, the, the, the staff and where the company is going. Lack of alignment, okay. right? So the, okay. the, the, that's the problem with most companies. So therefore, right. the solution is if you can figure out a way to align staff with purpose, with mission, and align the business units so it work in harmony together, then right. that is nirvana, right? Yeah, basically. Okay. <laughs> so, suppose I said to you, Dane, what are the three most heavily weighted characteristics of the best leaders in the world? What would you say? Um, that's a big one. Maybe they are curious. Um, yes, um, three. They curious, um, they prioritize continuous learning, I guess as curious, they, um, yes. open-minded um, yes. and uh, focused. Okay, curious, continuously learning, lear continuously learning and focused, okay? Mm 
Right. Now, I asked that question of a fr friend of mine a few years ago. And when right. I asked the question, Dean, I said to myself, Mike, suppose someone asked you that question, how would you answer it? Mm -hmm. And I thought, the best leaders in the world, the three most heavily weighted characteristics are they're strategic in their thinking. And then right. it doesn't make sense having strategy if you can't execute. True. <laughs> and then they're the Very best, they're, they're passionate advocates. Okay? Right. right. So strategy, execution, advocacy. Those are characteristics of the best leaders in the world. So, the, so now, remember we talk about, so, so, so as you never forget, Dean, what's the first mm. letter in the word strategy? S. You sure? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> what's the first yeah. letter in the word execute, Dean? E. What's the first e, letter in the X. word? Eh? E. What's Go the on. first letter in the word advocacy? A. What does, what do the letters S-E-A spell? Spells out C. Exactly. <laughs> so therefore, the best leaders in the world, they practice C. Okay? Right. Okay. So now, let's talk about alignment now. Alignment. Uh, right. Suppose, so if you want to get your uh, business units, you, you want to, you, you, you have, uh, you, you're, you're consulting to any company. As I said, right. misalignment is all is the, is the biggest problem. So you want to have mm -hmm. the maximum value add you can give, Dean, is to have your the company to whom you're consulting get aligned, the business units. Right. So now, right. you're, if you're consulting to the CEO, he you said, Ms. CEO, CEO mm -hmm. goes through C with Ms. CEO. The CEO will definitely agree with you. So, so <laughs> what you should do, Ms. CEO, is say to your each business unit head, I just want your C plan, okay? C plan. Your okay. C -A your plan. S E A plan, your strategy, right. your strategy plan for your business unit, your execution right. plan, and your advocacy plan. And you do that for okay. all your different business units. And then at the end of the quarter, you, you all you do is say, finance, come. I, I want to hear how you did in the last quarter with respect to mm. S E A. Marketing, right. sales, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. So, so, like, um, eh? so, so the thing mm -hmm. I'm puzzled about, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so let's say in a sinking chip, in this analogy, when I see a, a chip is sinking, the yes. first thing you consider is maybe I need to lighten some weight. You know, maybe I need to offload some assets, maybe some people. Um, yes. Maybe I need to look for the hole. How do I patch this hole so the water doesn't keep coming in? Um, you know, find the source of the problem. Or maybe you just accept that this this sink this ship is sinking, um, and you find a way to take out the best parts of it so you can continue onwards. Right. The question is, well, how do you approach it? But also, how do you prevent a mutiny? Because that's a very big change for people to take on. Yeah. Well, okay. So it depends on the situation, obviously. So let me go back to let me go back to NCB initially because you mentioned NCB initially, and and you respected what was done how we took NCB from being out of FinSAC and made, right. it, uh, made it a very successful business. So the first right. thing I did, the first, when, when, I, when I bought NCB, I did not think, how best do I increase quarterly profits in a linear manner? I didn't think that way. I thought okay. to myself, the highest value, what is the highest value add this business can give to this country? Jamaica. Right and, right. and I thought the answer to, came back to me, make this country wealthy. <laughs> right? If I can, okay. if NCB can be a vessel to make Jamaica wealthy and be a, mm. a role model for businesses, then that is the highest value add this business, NCB, could give to the con country. Right? So the question is, how do you make countries wealthy? Right? That's the question. So I'm going right. through the logic which you know. Countries, mm -hmm. you make countries wealthy in no different way from how you make uh, companies wealthy or individuals, we in individuals wealthy. You have to reinvest right. and compound. You have to reinvest and compound two things. Number one, uh, profits. And you have to reinvest and compound human capital. 
right? Okay. So the first okay. thing, I, so first thing I did was to say, okay, uh, to 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 to, 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 to the, I now have to. The other thing we did was to give the staff purpose, hmm. right? Give the staff purpose. Why do you come into work every day, and right. uh, perform your your uh, your your data entry job or your uh, tailor job? Why do you do that? If you can right. make a nexus with a staff member as to what they're doing every day to some higher purpose, like building a better country so that your kids mm. can have a better life, then they tap dance to work because there's a purpose. Okay? Right. Right. So the, it's alignment of purpose and values between the staff and the organization. Okay. So, so within the, the analogy, basically, to save a sinking ship, just make sure everybody is on board. Make make sure no you don't no 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 I didn't say that. You make sure that everybody who are, who are aligned are on right, board. The right people, right the people. The right are on people board. and the people who are not aligned off the ship. Make sure they're Fair on enough. the sea. <laughs> <laughs> yes, off the ship into the sea. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. On the sea. Yeah. Mm. Strategy, execution, advocacy. To understood. Well, thank you so much, Dane, for those insightful questions. I see a couple of comments. Good luck, Dane. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Philip reminding people to like up the, the video. We have uh, this person saying one word, quantitative strategy. I think he's been studying you, Mr. Lee Chin. Uh, Abel was answering the question about the three characteristics. He said reliant, productive, and collaborative. But remember, SEA, C. Strategy, execution, advocacy. We're going to take a quick break and come back with our third guest for Michael Leachin. Attention! Are you struggling with money? Trying to figure out how to pay off your credit cards? Are you ready to learn how to invest? and grow your money. I'm Khalila Reynolds, the Money General, and I'm on a mission to help you get better with money. Join me inside the Money Mission community where I'll teach you how to manage money, make more money, and annihilate bad debt. Click the link in the description to sign up for your basic or premium membership. Let's get this money. I took Kalila's Investing for Beginners Masterclass because I heard there was an IPO launching and I just jumped right into it. Help me to do how to invest and the steps they can go to um, achieve your goals as well. If it is that y'all are interested in learning about investments or anything, I really suggest that you hop on that class, that masterclass, because the way that I look at money now and saving, I, don't, I look at it different now. Kalila, you are the reason Martella Brown started investing. Learn the basics about stock market investing today. Investing for Beginners is available on demand or with a premium membership to the Money Mission community. Join now at moneymission.mn.co. The link is in the description. <laughs> All right, welcome back, welcome back. So our next guest, and just before I introduce him, let me remind our guests as well, pay attention to the private chat on the side because I'm going to be giving you prompts when you have five minutes and two minutes remaining and when it's time to wrap up. So our next guest is Akeem Hutchinson. Akeem is a computer science student at UE, but he's also a budding entrepreneur. He already has two business ventures under his belt. One is a small tech business doing computer repairs and servicing. And the other is a travel agency that already employs five people and they do tours around Jamaica. Let's welcome Akeem Hutchinson. Hi, Akeem. <laughs> Akeem, you can go right ahead and ask a question. Mr. Hutchinson, pleased to meet you, man. We're not hearing you. I don't know if you're muted or some. We're not hearing you, Akeem. There is okay. an issue. Is there, there you go. We're hearing now. All right. Awesome. 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 Good night, Mr. Leachin. How are you doing, sir? Very, very good. Good evening, Akeem. Boy, Akeem, Akeem, you have a beautiful smile. <laughs> All right, thank you. 
<laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. I'm also that it is a pleasure. I have been looking forward to a moment like this for the longest while. Whoa, thank um, you. you. You humble me, Akeem. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I am a young entrepreneur, a young budding entrepreneur. And as an entrepreneur, there comes a point where we realize that we cannot do everything. How does one vet and build an effective team to execute a project or a business idea? Akeem, you're, 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 it's, it's difficult to hear you. How does one vet and build an effective team? Is that the question, Akeem? How do you vet yes, and build an effective team? Yes, that's the question. Are you hearing me? Are yes, I can hear you. So, so firstly, Akeem, you hire... Can, can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Oh, you, you, you hire for attitude and values, right? You know, you know I, 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 there is a, uh, a framework that I use, Akeem, when it comes to relationships, whether it's the relationship between your parents and yourself, mm -hmm. yourself and your children, or yourself and your staff. And the framework is, Successful relationships uh, will always will always have the following component parts. They're always based on integrity. Yeah. Secondly, intelligence in how decisions are made, Akeem. Thirdly, passion. And fourthly, alignment. Right? So, so to build, if you want to, the ideal situation is to surround yourself with people who have I, integrity, I, intelligence in how decisions are made. It's not right, sorry, might is right. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. Right? So intelligence in how decisions are made. Thirdly, passion, lean, hunger, passion, and fourthly, uh, there must be alignment, right? So now, uh, also, experience is an easy overlay, right? It's better to hire yeah. for values and values than than experience. And all there's a there's a watch out here. If the first one, integrity, is not present, the other two, which is intelligence and passion, will work against you. Right. Yeah. So, so for successful for relationships to be successful, you have to look for people, find people who have those characteristics. And if one missing, no. Right. If you just think about all the relationships that worked for you, and I'm, I suggest that, that that they'll have all of those four component parts. And if you think about all the relationships, Akeem, that did not work, at least one of those four were missing, was missing, at least one, right? So that's the first thing, higher for values and attitude. Yeah, 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 thank you, thank you so much. Surround so yourself, surround yourself with people who are, who are uh, like-minded in terms of those standards. Yeah, yeah, so in a sense it's kind of like, even when you build your personal relationships, you have to take that into account as well. It's the same formula, in a sense. And you, Akeem, you want to surround yourself with a team, people you like, similar similar values, because as a startup, you're going to be together long hours, right? Mm -hmm. And if, if you're, you're aligned, you know what? You can throw cheers at each other, because you should, when, you, when you're debating an issue, right? Uh, but at the end of the day, because you're aligned, it's not personal. It's just we, we're being rigorous, right? Okay. Okay. Well, all right. So moving into my next question, um, at what point do you realize a business is not worth your time and deliver, deliberate if you should just give up or continue the venture? Well, well firstly, firstly, let us, let us de develop a framework here, Akeem, for businesses that you should how you should look about, look at uh, in terms of what businesses should you be going into. Uh, I have another framework for you, Akeem. And it's, I, I, I define it as the three Ps, 
right? You want the first P is, and everywhere the person implicitly did the three P's. The first one being they predicted something. They had a view of the world. They predicted, right? Elon Musk. Think Elon Musk. Think Amazon. They predicted where the world is going based on some methodology that they had confidence in. So they, pre they predicted. And secondly, they planned for their prediction. And thirdly, they persevered with their plan. So that's getting into what that will direct you in terms of what businesses you should be considering. Businesses of the future, right? Not businesses that are, uh, you, you see everybody's doing today because those businesses invariably will be commodities, right? And there will be, in other words, Lots of them around, it's like rice green, right? You can't distinguish between one or the other. And that's that's yeah. a bad business. If you think ahead uh, and, and you, uh, you, have a, you have a methodology to predict, right? Uh, then you will grow, grow into the business. So where it is created by doing today what other people will be doing in the future. Not doing today what everybody else is doing. Yeah. Play, play 10 steps ahead of everybody. Yeah, get that. Um, so my um, last question is, what are some techniques and ways you have used in Jamaica to build capital? I'm not only speaking about money, but resources and people for your projects and business ideas. What, what are the, some of, you, you see, what are some of the techniques I've used to build capital, human capital specifically? You say not necessarily, not necessarily financial capital. Not necessarily financial You're, capital, but that included. I'm, as I well. beg your pardon. Hmm? I'm saying not necessarily financial capital, but that's included as well. Yes. So financial. So uh, financial capital. When you when you build a business, uh, when you're building a business, there is a uh, another framework that you should be conscious of, uh, Akeem, and I, I I refer to it as the three Ds, right? The first D is uh, the business. Uh, the business, there must be no dilution of the shareholders. You want to minimize dilution, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you say, especially with the uh, startups, uh, you have to be very careful not to be selling out too early because you'll be diluting yourself, right? So you want to do everything to minimize dilution. You want to do every, and when you get to the point whereby the business now has cash flow and you can pay a dividend, you want to do everything to make sure your dividend is not interfered with. So dilution, dividend, and thirdly, you want to make sure whatever your business, whatever you do in your portfolio of businesses, they don't distract you from your core business or core businesses. So the dilution. Dividend distraction, the three Ds. So now getting back to uh, financial capital. Financial capital, you can take in investors, that's equity, right? So you have to balance between taking investors in, which will dilute you as a founder, and borrowing to invest in your business, which has its own has its own risks. So it's the, it's the balance, and it depends on the type of business you're in. Uh, Startups have a very difficult time borrowing. Uh, so you just have to accept dilution. You just have to figure out how to minimize it at the front, right? At the front end, because at the, you're apt to give up too much value initially. So to, to, somehow you have to figure out how to get, get start building value. And then over time, you can... Uh, you, you, you can fundraise equity if you, if, you, if you are in a, the tech business because tech businesses are hard to finance with debt, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's, I would do it, I would start off, but I, I would not be, I would try my best not to dilute myself initially, build value. And as I, as I build value, I would issue tranche, tranches of equity as little as possible just to get me to the next, to the next uh uh value step up okay okay all right um all right thank you, thank you so, so much akim so yes. many yes, thank you.
Thank so you so many much for this opportunity. Over. Aki, so good, many good luck here. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it, man. Awesome. Dilution, dividend, distraction, the three Ds. Earlier we heard about the three Ps, people who predicted, planned, and persevered. Boy, when is the book coming out, Mr. Lee Jin? <laughs> I feel like we need to just compile all of these frameworks in a book. Mm. Actually, actually, my wife Sonia did. But it's, it's the, it's, she did it specifically for the family so that uh, my ears and friends uh, can can uh, uh, can have the benefit of these codified frameworks. So no plans to publish it for the rest of us? Uh, I, I, I'll ask Sonia to send you a copy, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, that's just me though, anyway. But you, so we can figure out, hey, Kalila, we can mm -hmm. figure out how to distribute it, uh, distribute it uh, to whomever. Okay. Because there's All an right. electronic version, which, which there is, there's no charge. Absolutely. Okay. We'll, we'll work that out. You already delivered on your last promise. So time for the next one. We'll get the MLC playbook ready in <laughs> due course. Mm. So let's introduce our fourth guest. And her name is Sidia Allen. Sidia works in healthcare and she's known for her dedication to the well being of others and her contributions to society. She has a career spanning over 13 years as a compassionate nurse and she's embodied the essence of care and healing. Not only does she excel mm -hmm. as a nurse, she also wears many other hats. She's an accomplished writer, a gifted public speaker, and a passionate entrepreneur. So let's welcome Sidia Allen. Hi, Sidia. Hi, Kalila. And hi, Mr. Lee Chin. It's an honor. Hi, hi Sidia. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. All right, so for my first question, um, I've been thinking about my question. I have quite a few questions to ask you, but nevertheless, I will ask you from a financial aspect, what financial principles have been the most crucial to your success? That is the first question. Borrowing to invest. Borrowing to invest. That has been pivotal to how I create, pivotal. to how wealth is created. Yes. Uh, think about it. It, it, uh, most people, their best asset is their home. Am I right? Am I right? Yes, sir. But if they had to buy their home for cash, they would never ever own the home. Wow. So the, what they do, they put a down payment and they get a mortgage. The mortgage is borrowing to invest. Okay. And they bought an asset that over time will grow in value. So that's the reason why most people, to most people, their best asset is their home because they exercise that principle of borrowing to invest. The same is true, uh, and a home is just an, in, uh, the principle is true when you borrow to invest in other assets, whether it's uh, your business or high quality shares, high quality shares, etc. So the, 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 the borrowing to invest has been the essence of how I created well okay sir okay so my other question not about finance but i've been in the advocating i've been in the health field and i've been advocating for a long time i have a humanitarian health aid project that we started in march where we offer assistance to the less fortunate and the most vulnerable in jamaica island wide right so my next question is how can we gain resources to aid in the project and keep it ongoing? Uh, you're asking me a general, a specific question, right? Yes. How yes. can you? It's, um, it's a two-part question, right? So, ha as a advocating body, right, a humanitarian, how can we gain gain? the resources and keep it ongoing because so, that's a challenge in our department yes so 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 you need to find find a philanthropist who is uh aligned with your mission yes right uh and then uh so you need to identify 
those people who are philanthropic, whose uh, philanthropy aligns with your mission. So that will be the challenge because you're asking for donations, basically, right? Yes. Yeah. For medical so supplies and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So you just have to find uh, entities that are aligned with what you're trying we have to do. Been to, we have been to many entities um but the, the the donations are not coming as we would like um because be there are many, uh, Cydia, please yes. be specific specific if, you, if you're medical, being medically uh -huh. so, for example medications are are the ppes and stuff like that so mm -hmm. they're not coming as they are supposed as we would would like them to, to assist yes. these individuals, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it has been a challenge. It has mm -hmm. been a challenge. And we so started Cydia, yes. Cydia, uh where where are you where, where's your hunting ground? Is it just Jamaica? Fun yes, for no. Uh, okay, so it, it may be a challenge in Jamaica, but probably Jamaica. should cast probably should cast a wider net. Probably should okay. go on the internet to look for foundations. Yes. Look, uh, that that would have uh, uh, this as their mandate, right? And then just approach them, because international foundations uh, may have more resource access to resources, and they may have uh, that the 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 the, 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 the what should I say the uh, the more indelible your need. Right, the more indelible your need, uh, you may just play into the, 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 the emotions and the mandate of a foundation that has big access. And uh, so, s s cast a wider net, right? Cast a wider net, look internationally, and see if you can find uh, alignment between what you're doing and, and foundations. All of from all over the world, in so there's no look in Jamaica. Okay, okay. Because in Jamaica, your 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 uh your your pond is limited to fish. Yeah. Your fishing pond Understand. is limited. Understand. Great advice, Mr. Leachin. Thank you so much. So cast a wider net. Look beyond just Jamaica. That's I think it applies to to so many different things. Let's take our final <laughs> break and come back with our last mentee for tonight. And she's now established herself Jamaican opera. You get a t-shirt, you get a t-shirt, you get a t-shirt. Everybody gets a t-shirt. My name is Nicola Samuels. I joined the Money Mission. I'm here at the Money Mission event tonight, which was absolutely awesome. The whole idea of joining Money Mission in the first place is to come and be a part of a like-minded community of everybody that wants to get some wealth, wants to do better financially, as well as to be in the one central place that has a lot of information about finances, right? One of the things that a lot of persons I know that don't benefit from is persons that are teaching financial education as well as teaching how it is that you can make wealth and generate income from multiple sources as well. Typically, that's not something that you will find unless you go out and seek it. And what Kalila has done in creating a money mission community is absolutely awesome. My name is Anita Bailey. The reason I joined the money mission is because during a very hard time in my life last year, I just completed my master's. I had quite a number of debt from that master's program and Kalila came to my organization. We had a session where she introduced us to how to budget, how to manage our money and also how to invest. And through the tools that she gave us on that day, the tools and the templates that she provided me, I was able to set up my budget. Um, organize my life, all my income streams, what my credit card debts are like and how to manage that. And I was able to get out of debt by March the following year. So I took approximately five months. And this was something I was struggling with for 
maybe about a year. And with Kalila's help through the money mission, I was able to get through that. And I would advise anyone, if you're starting a business, you're looking to invest, if you're having challenges with your money, you're not quite sure how to manage your money um, as you're starting into the working world, Kalila and the money mission is where you want to be. You want to sign up with her program because it is absolutely amazing. Wow, stories like that, that is why we do what we do. I wasn't even expecting that. So it was the first time I saw those two testimonials. Big up Nicholas, he was the first person to ask a question this evening, <coughs> a member of Money Mission. So let me introduce our final mentee for this evening. His name is Roberto Williams. Roberto is the owner of PTS Marketing Agency and also the author of I Quit, How to Turn Your Job into a Business. Roberto lives in Spanish town. He quit his job about two and a half years ago during COVID. And at the time he worked in sales. Now he's a full-time entrepreneur. Good evening, Roberto. Yes, good evening, good evening. Roberto. Yes, hi, Mr. Leachin, and hi, Kalila. It is truly a pleasure to be here on this, uh, you know, this platform. I'm excited to ask you these two questions, man. See, My you know, pleasure. Know. Pleased to meet you, Roberto. Likewise, likewise, Mr. Leach. Mr. CEO. So, yes, man. Yes, <laughs> sir, Roberto. <laughs> yes. Yes, so my first question, sir, you know, as a new entrepreneur, a new CEO, you know, building my business with ups and downs, you know, the roller coaster of a business. What I've been doing some reading and some researching, and what I found that I my company has lacked over the the um over the, the the few months and years that I've been doing it is that framework and that structure. And I realized that you use that word framework a lot, you know. So over the past month, over the past three months now, I've been build, focusing on building out my product framework, my onboarding acquisition framework, fulfillment and offboarding, right? I don't want to confuse you with too much of those stuff. But, you know, I've been working on building out those framework. So what I want to ask you is when you were a new entrepreneur and you didn't have all the resources that, you know, you do have now at your disposal, what did you do to basically build out that, fr that framework or that system that has allowed you to basically, you know, work on your business and not in the business? <clears throat> so, Roberto, I used to sell mutual funds in Canada, right? Yeah. And that's what, so my, my, my I would uh, that's what my first job in Canada. I'm a civil engineer, and uh, the first thing I did was I asked myself the question. I I didn't know I was 26 years old. So as a young Jamaican, as a young Jamaican in Canada. I didn't know anyone with money. So I had to knock on, I had a cold call, knock on doors, right? Right. And when, and I, I didn't look like your typical Canadian uh, mutual fund salesperson. I didn't sound like that person. I wasn't the stereotypical Canadian uh, mutual fund person. So when someone said to me, okay, Mike, I'll listen to you, hear what you have to say, come to my home. When I got to their home, Roberto, I, before I knocked on the door, I would ask myself the question, what's the highest value add I can give to this family here? What is that one thing? If I can give it to, give it to them, it will transform their life. And the answer kept coming back to me, Mike, make them wealthy. Make them wealthy. So as an engineer, I thought, is there, is there a formula that if you practice consistently, the only outcome is wealth? Because if there's such a formula, I want to know what that formula is. And that's what I'm going to promote. I'm going to advocate that. And I'm going to behave in such a way that my, uh, my, my, my behavior is reflective of um, my beliefs. Okay? So remember... I wanted to know if there was a formula, formula to create wealth. And if there's such a formula, I want to know what it was. And I'm going to live it. 
and be the role model for it. Okay. So as an engineer, there's a protocol that you go through when you have a, an issue that you want to solve. Number one, you observe. Number two, from your observations, you create a hypothesis. Number three, you stress test the hypothesis to see if it makes sense. If it makes sense, you codify it and then you leave it. You hardwire it to, to become, for it to become who you are. So my code, the code I wanted to break was the, the code to create wealth. That's the code I wanted to break. So I went through that process. I observed wealthy people. And I created a hypothesis and I stress tested it. I, uh, it, it held through and I codified it and then I lived it, I hardwired it. So what did I, uh, did, what did I discover? Every wealthy person, every person who became wealthy by creating it did five things. Number one, they own a few high quality businesses. Number two, they make sure that those few high quality businesses are domiciled in strong long-term growth industries. Number three, they make sure that they really understand them. That's a key. Number four, they, use, they make sure they use other people's money prudently. And lastly, they simply hold those few businesses for the long run. That's how wealth is created in the real world, right? So now I was selling mutual funds and a mutual fund the mutual fund product has typically a hundred different stocks, hundred different businesses. So it's the exact opposite of those five uh, criteria in how wealth is created. So when I go out, so I, I eventually started a mutual fund company that managed mutual fund with, by my mutual fund had only 15 companies, not typically like a hundred or 200 stocks. Mine had 15, I could understand 15, and mine were 100% in keeping with those five laws. We call, I now call those five laws, the five laws of wealth creation. So I started a business that reflected those five principles in the mutual fund. So my mutual funds did not have 100. It had only 15, right? So it was differentiated in the marketplace. Every mutual fund has 100, mine only had 15. So people would say, Mike, yours isn't a mutual fund. So I'd say, what do you want? You want to buy mutual funds or you want to create wealth? If you want to create wealth, wealth is created by these five uh, principles, five laws, and this fund represent, uh, is, a, is a perfect uh, uh, example of the five laws. Okay? So you will create wealth. So that's what I did. I created a... a uh, a business that was differentiated and I then went out and advocated, I sold and then eventually I started off with $800,000 in assets on the management in 12 years it became 15 billion right uh, because over time the track record became the best in Canada it became the largest privately owned mutual fund company in Canada, AIC so the principles, framework principles, uh, you have to make sure that you address clients' needs. In this case, clients wanted to create wealth, right? But they were buying a product, mutual funds, or products, mutual funds, that had no, the structure of the fund, of funds, mutual funds, isn't such that they will create wealth. But they diversify. They are diversified. So because they have 100 different stocks, 100 different businesses in the fund. But people, did, they, they, they want to create wealth. Uh, and therefore, uh, my, my fund was 100% in keeping with the five laws, which is how wealth is created in the real world. And that's why I got traction by building a rep reputation, uh, the track, being a track record, which became the best in Canada. Uh, after five years, and then assets just started to flood in. Yes, sir. You can yes, go sir. ahead, Roberto, and ask oh, your next sorry, question. Okay. Last, we have time for one last question. You can go ahead. 
yes, the, the connection was going out a little bit, Mr. Leachy. But thank you so much. That was wonderfully answered, man. Wonderfully answered. So my, my next question is, you know, going about, uh, you know, my, my business ventures, I find that a lot of the time I find myself working in the business, right? And not working on the business, you know? So what I want to know as, you know, as someone who I hear you mention your family a lot, you know, and, you know, I'm sure that you spend time with, with you spend time with your hobbies and stuff. How do you separate yourself from working inside of the business and then start taking a strategic approach and start working on the business? You have to do both. There are some strategies for that. You have to do both, Roberto. You have to work on the business and in the business. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you have to make sure, work on the business. You have to make sure the business has uh, the best reputation, it's differentiated, and it is addressing customers' needs. That's working on the business. Working in the business is to make sure that uh, the staff, your staff is aligned towards those three imperatives, right? That's working in the business to make sure you have the right people who have the right alignment, who, who have the right compensation, who, who is, uh, uh, who has, and your North Star is clearly defined so that everybody march to the same rhythm, cadence. That's working in the business now. Okay. So in and on. Sorry, <laughs> the life of an entrepreneur. It's both. It's both. Okay? And then you talked about, you, you mentioned family. You know right. what, Roberto? Everybody's trying to uh, have the holy grail, which is balance. Man, I have never been able to balance. So I'm always in the, zo in the zone. Uh, so I, uh, with my family, when I'm working, when I'm working out, it, uh, my business is always on my mind. So I, I don't have balance that way, my friend, because there's always something that comes up to ambush you on <laughs> weekends, at night. You know, you know what it's like. So you just can't cut off. It's, you're always on. That's the life right. of an entrepreneur. Much appreciated. Much appreciated, Mr. Leachin. Mm -hmm. I, I think those questions are wonderfully answered. As you can see, I was taking... Uh, you know, taking notes vigorously. Um, what I want to ask before I leave, I did get the um, four, I get four steps out of the five, uh, which is creating wealth in the real world. You said you have to um, have a few high quality business, have a few high quality business. Um, you basically have to understand them and you have to use other people's money. And they have to be in strong long-term growth industries. Okay. And lastly, they have to, uh, your attitude towards ownership is I'll own these businesses for as long as they remain high quality and the industry within which they are domiciled is still in a strong long-term growth mode. There's one more thing I want to leave with you, Roberto. Yes. And it's relevant to everybody on this, on, on, in this audience. Every day, Roberto, as a, an entrepreneur, you walk, you go to work with a toolkit, right? A toolkit. A toolkit. A toolkit. And a you're in your toolkit, sir. You have to, you have your assets in that toolkit. You have four assets in that toolkit. Number one, a fresh pair of eyes and ears. Number two, that's, that's a big asset. A fresh pair of eyes and ears. Number two, your problems, you're a problem solver. You're solutions oriented, right? Number three, you connect dots. That's the third asset in your toolkit. And number four, you align with people. Mm, those are the four, those are the four things you should take. Remember, Roberta, in your toolkit every day, you go to work with those four assets. And if you go to work with those four assets, my friend, there's no question as to what will happen to you. Because Indeed. you're going with a fresh pair of eyes and you, 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 you see things differently because you're listening. Fresh pair of eyes and you listen. And there are two types of listeners. People who listen to rebut 
and people will listen to understand. Right. You understand? Right. So who are you, Mr. Roberto? Well, I would say I am someone who listens to 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 understand the person because i you know as an entrepreneur you really have to be able to connect with people because communication is very important that's yes. your, your your you should be able to communicate the mission communicate instructions you know and then accept feedback so the only way that you can it's a loop the only way that you can do effective communication is through listening not just to respond but listening to understand process and then you respond after that's how i understand it mr legion yes sir yes sir okay thank you so much whoa all right so I, I feel like i have the outline for the book already mr legion i have your five laws of wealth creation so i've been taking notes as well on a few high quality businesses in strong long-term growth industries Understand the businesses extremely well, use other people's money and invest in them for the long term as long as it makes sense. And then the assets in your toolkit have a fresh pair of eyes, be a problem solver, connect dots and align with people. Before we go, let me take a couple of comments. Uh, I see people were asking for your book. John says, love that toolkit, Mr. Chin. Let me, I must get one. Gabriel shouting us out from Trinidad and Tobago. John again says, earthquake? Yes, Mr. Chin's advice is shaking the debt. <laughs> ah, so much for earthquake. Uh, Abel says, I got to look for future performance use and use leverage prudently. And Abel again says, the mentees are pretty awesome. They have questions that I can't even think about. So that's that really is awesome. They had they came with some really great questions. Did they challenge you tonight, Mr. Lee Chin? 100%. <laughs> Good. Well, hopefully I was relevant to, to the uh, uh, invitees who you asked. There are some brilliant questions. And I think... I, I try to answer it in a generic way so that they can, uh, and, and in, a, in, in a generic way, that's framework based. I think you burst some bubbles with that last part, though, when you said that you basically can't achieve balance or it's extremely difficult to achieve balance because, trust me, mm -hmm. I know it, it's tough. I feel like for yeah. me, balance is best achieved over time. So there will be periods of time in your life when family is priority and there are other periods of time when you know, work is going to take priority over everything else. So yeah, thank you again. And we'll see you again, I think in January, October, November, December. Yeah, late January, early February. Thanks so much. All for right. joining us. And My I'll pleasure. wait for the book. <laughs> and I shall wait for the book and so shall our viewers. So that is it for the second installment of Ask Mike, brought to you by Kalila Reynolds Media. Uh, shout out to all our Money Mission members who signed up, who completed the form and came up with those amazing and brilliant questions. Remember to join the Money Mission community. The link is in the description. And tomorrow is Taking Stock, so I'll see you tomorrow at 8 o'clock right here on YouTube. And then next week, my new course, Money Marketing Begins, and there is a sale going on right now. So right now you can get 40% off once you sign up by tomorrow. Tomorrow night, tomorrow at 11.59 p.m. is the deadline to access that sale. And then the course starts on November 6. So that's it for this installment of Ask Mike. See you again soon. And of course, let's get this money. Here are the four things you need to know to make money on social media. One, how to get people's attention and create compelling content that makes them stop scrolling and listen to you. Two, how to build an audience that will constantly share your content so that it goes viral. Three, how to get your audience to take a specific action such as visiting your website, signing up for your emails or buying a product. And four, how to run your social media like a business. These are the four elements of my new masterclass, Money Marketing. It starts November 6th, live inside the Money Mission community. Sign up by October 31 and get 40% off. I guarantee you'll get thousands of dollars in value 
if you implement these strategies. Go to the link in my bio and tap money marketing for 40% off. Sale ends October 31. Let's get this money.